I hope the screen is visible. Can one of you just uh, say that it is visible properly? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. And throughout the session, uh, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions, interact, or uh, even if you have used something more than this, or uh, you want to have some addition to this, please feel free to unmute yourself. We are all learning here from one another. So there is no top to bottom approach. And uh, let's just begin with the ICT tools for science. And we are going to talk about the augmented reality, the virtual reality, simulations, virtual labs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are so many things that we can do. But before we start with it, let's just see what we are going to do in today's session. Uh, the session will be like one hour, 15 minutes or something. Uh, the first and the foremost is that we are going to see when to use AR, VR uh, simulations and other things. Now, why do we need this? Uh, for a very simple purpose and with one of my favorite quotes, it will always come. The thing is every single day you will have around 150, 150 tools and different apps that are being launched for the specific purpose of augmented reality, virtual reality and uh, simulations and everything. What do you use out of those 150 and when do you use and how do you use? So you have to answer these three questions, right? Only then it will make sense. Otherwise it doesn't. And just uh, like my favorite quote is a fool with a tool. It's still a fool. So you better learn to understand how and where to use the tools and when to use the tools. So that's why the usage principles are the most important things that we are going to talk of. And these will be framed or these are framed in conjunction with the AAC, that is the Alternative Academic Calendar, which was given by NCRT. Then we will have websites and apps. We'll look at a few of them with demo, depending upon our time. And then, yes, like the third and the fourth part, that is the tips and the question answers and discussions will go on throughout. So we do not have, like, I would not want to keep a separate session for question answers. Please feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions. It will be a slightly difficult for me to see the chat if I'm sharing the screen and also like discussing. So please feel free to unmute. In case somebody is putting out some question in the chat that I have missed out answering, then somebody else can just unmute and speak for that person. Okay, so with that in place, let's go ahead. Now, the first one, that is the usage principles and which actually guide as to what should be the way of integration. Now, when we talk about this, the first thing first, how many of you have used either online labs, virtual labs, simulations, augmented reality, virtual reality? If yes, which were the ones that you liked the most? Which were the ones you did not like at all? If you have not used anything so far, which I don't think would have happened because it's been two years. Uh, but even if it is like that, the scenario in your at your end that's fine just let me know that you haven't used so we know how to guide this discussion because every group that comes with um, for this particular training session comes with their own set of experiences and uh, if you have used them have you identified some gap or some particular place where you feel that no this doesn't work or this works much better than the actual in-person practical so yes so with this question you'll begin so feel free to unmute yourself and share your experience. Have you used it? Have you used any online lab? Even if you've used it through your mobile phones. So the silence is because you haven't used. Okay, I can see something in the chat. No, never. Okay. We'll just wait for one or two more answers. If it's a standard no, then okay. So then if it's a if majority of people have not used, then I, before proceeding ahead, I would like to know your expectations from this particular session. Wow, that was a capital N O. Okay, that speaks for itself. Yeah. Uh, what are the expectations from this particular session? Yes, 
you just want to know the tools or you want to know how to use them and when to use it and anything else like you want to know the tools that can be used for practicals you want to know it for uh, making the science understanding better what is it that you're actually looking out for okay so by the time you all type into the chat box i'll just tell you why is it very it it is a bit difficult for me to imagine that uh, after two years uh, like uh, for practical i have been using a simple online mode uh would you want to explain what is that simple online mode please yes ma'am yeah go ahead yeah it's a simple online in a, in a sense i have been using a stylus one extra yeah, yeah. medium, I should say. Stylus has been used because in most of the cases in teaching math, uh, like physics, I have to use a tool of mathematics also. So at the time I've been using the stylus, that one only. So which I call it as a simple online mode. Okay, okay. So uh, well, they it has got know the tools, but how to use the tools? Okay, tools to make understand science better for students. All right. Okay. So we are going to deal with these. And as we can see from the chat and the responses, it's still much more about understanding the science concepts and the practicality of it. Okay, and as we go ahead, just try to recollect and try to reflect that does actually the virtual reality practicals or the online lab, is it really going to replace the uh, science labs? Do you agree to that? or not so we can just go on thinking about it and have a discussion whenever you feel you're fine with it just unmute yourself now why did i say that it is very difficult for me to uh, imagine that people would not have used is because you'll not believe it but uh, i come from the state of maharashtra which was the one of the most widely and one of the most longest uh, affected state by the covid you will it will be hard for you all to imagine that uh, the school kids in my state have not gone to school for the past 700 days and more okay that's the report that's the government report that says it so 700 days if the schools i mean two years the students have not been to uh, school and college that is the junior college as we call them that is a higher secondary so how do we do the practicals and how do we do things so now this is going to be a very good uh, cultural diversity that we are experiencing from one like i said in the beginning the person from the far west of the country is taking a session for the far east of the country. So we are going to have a good diverse relations and explanation. So let's see what are the gaps and the experiences that we have. Uh, so first and foremost, like you all have said that you want the tools that will make the understanding of science easier. Now, this is something that is the truth of including AR and VR and any type of online uh, tools because the thing is science is everywhere if you see but the problem with it is with it means with science teaching is that uh, the concepts in the textbook are quite abstract so when we listen to it the visualization becomes quite difficult now uh, I'll just take one example like when I used to teach 12th standard students chemistry uh, and I have a very good rapport with the students. So a few of them had actually said it in the class that how do you know that uh, this particular electron is here and this is how it looks like when we can't even see the atoms. So how do you even predict? So it is too difficult for them to even imagine and to even visualize that how does this subatomic particle or how does this something which is at a a uh, nano scale which something you can't see and we are giving out the characterizations of it how is it even possible how do we say that okay the band gap between this energy and that energy is different and then therefore the electron jumps from one state to another how do you ex exactly show it uh, even when uh, the gates that is the and gate and then nor gate what we talk about in uh, electronics it's something that you don't see, right? But then you are going to draw the diagram and actually explain it to them. So it becomes little, not little, quite a bit, uh, you know, abstract. So for that is the one reason 
why we actually need the tools to make the visualizations clear in science. Then the second thing that is there, see, not everybody learns with the same pace. And so we need uh, students to practice certain things. Mm -hmm. It can be numericals, it can be a derivation, it can be um, just some reactions. It has to be repetitive. So uh, the AR tools, the VR tools, the online lab, they allow a lot of repetition. And it is again self-paced. So we don't have to, you know, like bother, just let's go back to our own school days when uh, even if we would get like a couple of minutes more at the microscope, we would be very happy because we wanted to see more, right? But the teacher would be like, you know, there are so many other students who are waiting. So you have to finish off viewing. Now, this is something that is for the demonstration and practicals. So it's not going to be self-paced if we are going to demonstrate. So who has to do the science practicals? The students have to do it at their pace, asynchronous. That is where this session comes in, okay? And when we talk of repetition, uh, okay, we'll take this point again up. Uh, also, like you all have said, to make it interesting. So definitely some certain animations and visualizations make science much more interesting, provided that we choose the correct media and we choose the correct tool. Uh, let's understand this, that if we want to be in sync with students, we have to talk their language. We cannot say that they are supposed to understand our language. Okay. And the students have a very different language when it comes to uh, teaching, learning and communication as in general, because it's a generation apart and therefore they have got a totally different language. Now, what is that language? We are going to see that and how, how uh, different tools help us to bridge that gap of the language. The language is not about whether I am speaking Bengali or Assamese or English or Hindi. No, it's a different type of a lingo that the students understand, which is uh, beyond any actual geographical language. Okay, so that's, again, something very interesting that we're going to see. Uh, we have already seen this, that uh, science, yes, when we start using the ICT tools, it does become tangible but yet it remains abstract. So, and hence and therefore, hence and therefore we need to really understand which tool or which animation or what type of, even something as simple as a PowerPoint presentation if you're going to use in science, is it adding to the abstractness? Is it adding to the misconception in a guise of, you know, clarifying misconception? So simple thing. If I'm going to show the structure of an atom, I'm always taking the structure of the atom because it uh, applies to the physics and the chemistry both. And it, I mean, anybody from class eight onwards can understand this. And if it is applicable there, it will be applicable everywhere. So uh, suppose if I were to take a PowerPoint presentation and if I were to make a slide just showing, uh, let us say one atom of hydrogen, okay? Nothing more than that on the slide. But if I actually put a black circle as is put in most of the textbooks for the orbit. And if I put, let's say, green color for the nucleus and let's say a yellow color for the electron, which is again, a yellow color, colored electron is something that you see most of the times in almost all the animations. What you are giving out to the student is and could be electrons are yellow colored orbitals are bangle like black colored things and a nucleus could be green now this is something which is a terrible misconception to have especially with respect to the orbitals because the moment you go to higher classes we know that orbitals don't exist we know that they are cloud like structures and the student has got that fitted into his or her brain that it is something like a bangle and so the student feels that whatever we learn in the textbook is either wrong or incomplete. And so feel frustrated. And so end up having either confusion for science or let us say, not happy with the way science is being taught. And therefore, uh, whatever tool we use, let's understand that even if it becomes to, in order to make it tangible, if you are going to use some colors or something, let's put that as an explanation that why we are using this color and this is not how it actually is. Uh, the most important thing here, the practical experience. 
I would never say that my online lab is going to totally do away my actual real practicals. How can I replace that? Come on, I mean, practical is a skill. Science is all about skill. Science is not about learning by heart formulae and applying it, right? So I need to know how do I use the weighing scale. I need to know how do I use the gravimetric analysis. Uh, I need to know how to change the rheostat position. I need to understand how do I use vernier calipers and even simplest thing as adjustment of a pendulum for taking the Newton's uh, rings experiment, adjusting the prism. These are all skills. They are not going to come using online. Then why do we use online, basically? Well, uh, this is just a thought given to you. You can think about it and just try thinking. So I come from a state which is very populous. So we have students, uh, batches of practicals like 120. When I was a student, even I was one, one of the 120 in one batch. And we used to have like 10, 12 batches, something like that. Now, if I'm going to perform one simple experiment of titration, I'm going to use 25 ml and I'm going to take five readings. That's 125 ml for one person. And after that titration, it goes down the drain. Now, 120 multiplied by 125. That's the size, that's the volume that we are using in one batch for one experiment. Now think of 10 batches and at least five experiments during the year. And think of the amount of chemicals that we are using. Think of the uh, water pollution that we are creating. Okay, now this is where I would like my online practicals to come into the picture, where because of that second point, self-paced and repetitive, my students can perform this particular thing, uh, repetition in an online lab, in a simulation, do all the things that they want to do with it and reduce the number of readings from five to three, thereby saving 50 ml per person multiplied by 120 students, that much volume and save that much of at least the pollution that we have. This can also be equally found in the physics part, it, where we are dealing with, you know, the resistors blow up and the diode and the zener diodes blow up and the circuits are suddenly not working because they are overheated. All these type of things, yes, we can overcome. And the most important problem is the seriousness and the reality missing. Now, what do we mean by this? Please, let's not overdo things just in a mindless manner, okay? Now, what happens is, if I give out a simulation to the students, so the simulation allows the students to increase the temperature to like, let us say, 1000 degrees also. Now, if we are going to do that, or even the current, you know, in case of physics, it will allow, it's a simulation. It will allow even uh, like, God forbid in numbers, uh, the passage of current. The students do that here, maybe for the sake of fun, maybe just out of curiosity or whatever. What do they see as impact? They see as impact that, yeah, the circuit got blown up and then, you know, uh, people are going to play video games and, you know, uh, there is a quite a good deal of violence in the games. And uh, there are students who are used to this particular blasts happening and also it's like, yeah, okay, it's just one of it. What will happen if they try to do the same thing in the real lab? That is the part where we as teachers have to make very conscious efforts. If we are going to make them use uh, online labs or ICT labs and then bring them back to the class, to, to the in-person laboratories, we have to make it very clear right in the beginning when we are giving them online practices that this type of uh, things or this type of uh, adventures, which are not supposed to be done in, in, in person, can be done here and why not and how you should be serious about it, uh, has to be there. So this is how we can also integrate the value system into the science. We can also bring that seriousness about science not and, and the online uh, labs not just being a fun or a game type of a thing, but serious business. Any questions here so far? So please go ahead and uh, like unmute yourself. 
Now the concept here basically of using the uh, ICT tools or any online laboratories and the augmented reality and virtual reality is, uh, it derives from the alternative academic calendar. Now, when we are talking about the alternative academic calendar, it was put up by the NCRT right in April 2020, yes, within less than a month of the pandemic shutdown, okay? Now, why was this is because uh, the laboratories, yeah, I mean, at your end, you might be having your students must have started coming in since quite, quite some time. But like I just shared with you, our students have now started going to school. Okay, it was just like, it's not even 15 days that the schools have uh, actually started full-fledged schools and colleges. So how do you bring in that laboratory wala part in your homes by doing something like do it yourself follow-up? So you explain something, taking either a virtual conference call, something like this, and taking a class or giving out the video that was given out in the AAC, in the alternative academic calendar. It was actually mapped. This topic, this video, and this activity that can be done by the students in their respective homes using household material, okay? Of course, you don't have to follow the same thing. We have to innovate. We have to contextualize. Uh, in the previous session that I took last week, uh, we had teachers from Rajasthan who had done a marvelous job of doing toys from trash because when I told them that uh, you can share your experiences, uh, one of the teachers had actually come up with those photographs and things that she had that she had made. So they were showing that how they had used, let us say, a safety pin to demonstrate liver uh, the liver as in the simple machines one and, liver, and uh, the toothpaste pump as uh, you know learned from the Arvind Gupta toys and the students had made it so that is where we have to instill in students that science is not only in the laboratory science is everywhere around you you learn the principle of science here and follow it up with something very simple household materials with a follow-up part second is the critical thinking just let me have a sip. It's very hot now here, if you don't believe it. Yeah, I don't know about uh, your part, uh, whether what the climate is. I know that north is still pleasant, but here we are touching 30 degrees, 32 degrees and so on. So it's quite hot. Okay, so coming back to the critical thinking part. Now, uh, one critical aspect that we have already seen was the seriousness and the skills that wala part. Another part comes here. Uh, so this actually happened when I was doing a teacher training session. Uh, now this, this particular group that I, I mean, I'm actually narrating you an anecdote and actual experience. So this particular teacher training group, uh, which I was training uh, was from the state of Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. So they were from the south, southern part of India. And uh, it was like uh, during the first phase of pandemic when the teachers had to be trained. So I asked them that, uh, how would we conduct, uh, because it's a, it was a workshop. So how would we conduct uh, DIY activities for or instill critical thinking for electrostatic? So static electricity, let's say class seven. Now, you know, very typically as the textbooks say that either it has to be the balloon so the teacher started saying about the balloon and I said, hey, hey, no, wait, because it's a lockdown. I can't go out and get a balloon. Then what did we do? Uh, then bits of papers. I said, no, we can't do that as well because uh, you're creating trash. So you don't have to do that because already the, uh, you know, the cleaning staff is already overburdened with cleaning. You can't create such type of things. So then what to use? So there was a lot of brainstorming and then a few teachers came up with that yeah if we have like if we brush the comb and the hair for quite a lot of time we know that uh, the comb gets that i mean charged electrostatically and we use it for what, that bits of paper thing but if we have a very thin stream of water flowing from a uh, from a tap very thin okay and if you bring the charged uh, comb near it, that stream of water is going to deflect. 
and that is how you actually show it and then we had another discussion like if we you are to uh, take a class because it's very difficult to keep the lower uh, grade students like class 6 up to class 9 to keep them occupied is really very difficult so how do you do that uh, suppose if i have to teach you something as simple as air has volume and occupies mass oh uh, sorry air has mass and occupies volume how do i show that at home uh there were lots and lots of people who were thinking about the same whatever is there in the textbook but then because of this critical thinking we had to think of no nothing doing and then it was something as simple as remember as kids we all have done this absolutely we all have done this that while we go in for a bath uh you take that tumbler and you try to just push it like you just try to push it in a tub of water in a bucket of water and it doesn't sink it comes up because there is air in it and so you know unless and until you tilt it the air is not going to go out and the water is not going to go in this is the most simplest way you can actually demonstrate that air has mass and occupies volume why do you need to have that particular thing where you are going to inflate two balloons hang them up on a straw and then you know burst those balloons it's not required you don't require a uh, non household materials to demonstrate the basic fundamentals of science and that we actually did this because now i teach uh, pre service teachers so during that particular batch that is 2020 we did this actually with the uh, like the students who were my mentees i told them to perform these type of experiments we have a whole list uh, of what type of experiments can be done there so this electrostatic part if it would have been a northern state then you know there is this play way game also what they do is it this happens in the northern part of the country where it is quite cold and then during that season if it is cold then you sit in a plastic chair like this and you beat the plastic chair ka back with a uh, let's say a woolen towel okay a lot of times of course you are not supposed to uh, touch your feet to the ground what happens is that chair becomes charged and so do you become charged and then you ask somebody to shake your hand and that person just gets so you know a current so that's an easy way but how do people from south india do that it's not that cold there right so it's just out of question so one particular scientific concept if you have to explain using a do it yourself activity we will have to think critically to contextualize it you cannot use the same one everywhere and that is what the alternative academic calendar also suggests that please create more and more uh, do it yourself activities and that's the whole fun of doing science right so uh, science need not actually it's backyard science that is much more science than the laboratory science so please bring in both and this is where your skill as a teacher comes this is where your critical analysis comes that will it work in my particular uh, context will this work will this not work how to what extent will it work and so on uh just always try to think of uh, prodding like keep on like thinking that how do i do this how do i do this and ask them to explore more and share this can this is true for the student a uh, student student type of a group also and also for a continuous professional development group where the teachers can explore and share more of whatever they have learned and the students can uh, because you have prodded their thinking they would also explore and share something more about it like i'll just give you an example uh, of course this example is of uh, i'll take one 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 general example and one of biology uh this is uh, this i did actually with the uh, schools who who i consult with for uh, like you know science clubs and all uh, in the city of mumbai so uh, there is this particular part in science where we have to trace the life cycle of flowers so i just told the science club teachers that you don't have to do anything and please don't make them like let them make charts they are not going to be interested in that so what are the kids interested in now here comes what i said that if we want to have good uh, i mean effective communication of science then we need to talk in the language of the students 
Now, what is the language of the students which goes beyond language? So now let's understand what is this. Well, today students don't talk always in terms of English, Hindi, or the regional language that is there. They talk in terms of photographs. Okay, yeah, they are all on Insta. They are all on Facebook. They are they have mobile phones in their homes and in their hands. So they talk in terms of photographs. They talk in terms of stickers. They talk in terms of gifs, and so on. Okay, that is the new media as we call them. So what I told them was, uh, let's not keep it as a written, written project. Ask the students to identify one plant which has got a bud or something, which is going to flower. If not, ask them to germinate, uh, you know, the moong that you have, the gram. And take one picture at the same time every day. Okay. So we, the, we call that activity also as one minute, same day, same time. Okay, one shot, one day, one same time, same day. So uh, every day, same time. So there were certain students who actually clicked the photograph early morning, 6.30, some of them 8 o'clock, some of them evening. And they had so much of it. And the entire life cycle is traced. So now somebody does it for, let's say, Rose, somebody else does it for Vinca, somebody else does it for Hibiscus, somebody else does it for something else. And uh, some people are actually sprouting the uh, legumes and the pulses. And what we have in the club, if we have 40 students, we have 40, diff we have a repository of 40 resources and just have an exhibition that this is how the things are. And that makes it very, very interesting. So if you're going to do this, if you're going to use the physics part, uh, this is again the actual thing that we write out, okay? So what we did was we asked the students to actually analyze and read. Now, analyze and read is to find out every equipment and the power that is consumed by every equipment uh, based on the usage. If you reduce the usage, uh, how much effectively are you able to reduce the energy bill and so many other projects. So this is how if they are going to explore. So I may not have this type of a geyser in my house. I may not have a microwave of this kind in my house. I may not have a washing machine, but that does not mean that I will not have a knowledge because now my some, some of my peer has got that device which they are showing. And so that's how I come to know that, okay, if I'm going to use this device, it is going to use up this much of power. And if I have to make certain uh, changes in its efficient use, then I will have to do this. So this is how the thinking steps and the exploring and the sharing uh, part and the, the do-it-yourself activity will totally help us to identify this. Any questions still here? Because we are now going to move towards websites and apps. So before we move towards the... One by one, we are going to take the app and the different websites. Anything that you would like to share? Yeah, because I don't deliver lectures. It's fine. It's like a sermon that you give. Then people who attend sermon go out uh, not imbibing the values. That's what I personally believe in. Unless and until we interact, there's no learning. So any thoughts still here? Because we are moving to the website and the app. Anybody wants to unmute rather than typing out? Okay, so I take that, yeah. So we are now proceeding towards the different types of app. And we will start first with OLAB. And just let me know if this screen is visible. Is this visible now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Okay. Thanks. Okay, and uh, I mean, rather than just saying yes or something, I would really like you to tell me what is that that you want to do here. So the OLABS was basically developed by uh, the Amrita University along with CDAC. 
and of course it is funded by the ministry of electronics and information technology as you can see it's funded by the government of india this is one of the fantastic labs that has been created and the best part it's free you just have to register this is again an open education resource and you will see here it's not only for the physics chemistry and biology it's also there for maths and i tell you uh i haven't seen a wonderful simulation for maths as much as i have seen here if you want to teach uh, simultaneous equations you should visit this particular place where the simulation actually is i know it's not my subject to teach maths but especially for o labs i will tell you the simulation is so much learner centered that you can actually have the feel of the student actually picks up with one variable or the other variable and then the sum actually changes as per the choice of the student so this is one of the best uh, examples for maths uh, the simultaneous equations chapter so currently we are looking at physics and chemistry so let's take up okay this time we had lots of physics people in the chat as i could see yeah so here if you see we have all the practicals mapped yeah all the practicals mapped as per grade and as per the topic okay so we have actually all of them and i am going to just randomly pick up something which i have not yet tried this starts from class 9 of course and then if for higher secondary so we can think of this and once uh, let's just try to you know pick up something really really randomly every time i take this session i pick up something at random so uh, okay let's pick up this with us okay so as you can see here uh, it tells you the theory the procedure it also has got an animation so what i suggest and whenever i do consulting to schools what i tell the science teachers is you give out the theory in your actual class you give out the procedure in your actual class you show the animation and explain okay so here we have the animation i guess somebody's uh, mic is on yeah so you can see this is the actual animation that is there but i personally believe that animation watching is a passive learning uh to an extent as compared to the science practical so just showing videos is not going to bring up even the skills even to minor extent so how do we do that we are going to do that using the simulator so you show till this much in a synchronous mode okay ask the students to register and then go ahead at their own time with the simulator now this is essentially asynchronous so that's why the online thing whenever you are going to include there has to be a very detailed planning and a very clear vision as to what are you trying to achieve out of this whole activity so now here you can see this uh this is again you know a beauty of uh, having technology tools so if you are going to select the surrounding now this is not really possible in the lab but because of this we can choose a chlorine or an argon surrounding we could never have done that in the lab right and then the surrounding temperature yes and then maybe the tube diameter we should change okay so you can see the tube diameter is changing now this is where the teachers are supposed to guide the students beforehand that if you are going to change the diameter you are going to observe what actually happens and that is what the student is going to present after doing the practical asynchronously otherwise it is just going to remain a play ki ha we did this we did that that doesn't make sense that's not science okay so then once you do this what happens you can of course put the sound on and uh then later what you can do is you can just use this and hit it okay so then if you are going to use this 
and the like i said we are using this very randomly and how does it work so if if any time you feel oh, okay okay we will also have to have this hit the tuning fork and you can see this you will also yeah i have kept the sound off from my side but if you try to use this you will see how this actually functions and does the uh, tube diameter and the sound change that is what the students can actually note down observe and then the follow up class we can discuss this with the students that what are the factors that affect um uh, how does the diameter and the resonation the resonating effect how does it actually what is the correlation between them so that is where your critical thinking can come into the picture uh, any thoughts on this till i show you the next uh, tool because i'll have to shut this off and go back and uh, come to the next one okay so here we are with i'll show you this one okay so now this is the pbs media uh, this is basically for chemistry as we can see but also for like i said to teach lots of topics of uh, physics also now uh, okay the good part of this is this can be you can see it can be shared in the google classroom as well so uh, many a times if you are going to be bothered about how do i send it it just allows you to like you know we just do away with that one now what happens here and how do we introduce the critical thinking aspect uh, is the bigger screen visible to you all is this screen visible which is like only welcome to can think and a blank screen yes yes it is visible okay what about fet yes fet is a very common thing and that is the reason why i did not include fet uh fet mostly all the physics and chemistry teachers have been using so i just took one uh, extra effort not to include fet uh, does that answer your question sir or not i don't actually know how to pronounce your name i'm very sorry for that okay so now what happens here is uh we have the two negative recharged ions here and then uh if i'm going to give this link to the students and going to tell them to learn themselves at their own pace i'm also going to ask them what happened and very minute questions like okay so from when do you think that the repulsion is visible and then what happens if you try to override the repulsion does it come out yes it comes out and it comes through the other end now this is something which we can actually have a lot of critical thinking about that to what extent can we overcome the repulsion and does it happen every time or uh, i mean if if there is a glitch in this particular thing like there was earlier uh, what used to happen is this just goes and now it doesn't come back but in the previous case it had gone off and it had come back right now this is a technical glitch so here if there is something like this then the students you will have to explain it to the students that this is not something that you like you're pushing it off it's going to come somewhere so this if it doesn't if it's not visible it's a technical glitch in the program otherwise uh, okay let me see there's a message in the chat yeah okay so uh, whenever you give out any tool or any simulators to the students it's very good if you can do it yourself okay first before you hand it out to them and then again the same way now i brought the negative part only till half and then if i leave it are they going to attract yes if they are, if they are then what happens if uh, till what distance that attraction is there and what is that distance called because all that is not going to be here uh, 
not going to be explained here as a self learning material this is a simulation so this is where the teachers role comes into picture so let's remember the technology is not overriding the use of teachers in fact teachers will become all the more important because they will know what is the science behind this and how to distinguish this from just remaining a play to making it something serious science so going back to the presentation now uh, i'll take you to this one of my favorite ones one of the favorite ones because then i'll show you something more now this is in its own your learning lab and this is like a real real way to get into the world also now why why do i say this is because of course there are thousands of resources that that you can use ready okay but the biggest part is you can also create your own now definitely you would think that it's sonia institute why would they even want you to create well you would because i mean they would want you to contribute by creation why regional resources contextualized resources like we had discussed earlier that one experiment works in the north of india uh, for static electricity during the winters it doesn't work in the southern part of india the so same way for inclusion and diversity you can recreate the the collection of resources that they have you can also create a resource that would be contextualized and would be like let's say using a playway method or let us say using some household material that is actually found in the trash and try to make it into backyard science so you are going to create your own resources and submit here and share it with the world and so that you can publish your own creations and of course once you publish your creations you can embed them in your own website and that's how you will be known as a science teacher whose class is to be look forward to not just by your school students or a particular area but to the world to the entire world and this is like this is a great website and smithsonian is doing like a fantastic job with this and of course as you can see it's just to create a free account you don't have to bother much and of course like there is a learning lab community there and you can see a new tool create a canvas create this create that always every day something or the other is coming up on this particular website a very very beautiful website to keep you updated mm, let's go to another one of my favorite ones now this is specifically for the physics classroom uh i love this website their twitter handle is excellent okay uh, i'm not actually going to show you the details of this i'm just going to keep it this here and i'm going to show i'm going to actually tell you later on you all find out and explore where it is in this particular website now uh, like i was telling you that we need to talk the language of the students and today students don't talk english and the regional language they talk in terms of images or photos or illustrations images stickers and gifs okay so now what i found on this website and why this is like one of it it leads my list of beautiful beautiful websites i say beautiful because of the way in which they have involved this language of the students uh like because we have lots of physics teachers here also this will sound much more interesting so there is this concept of free fall right so they have ex now how do we explain free fall we explain free fall using like uh, diagrams and like at least 15 minute ka explanation right they have used a gif to explain free fall and another gif to explain air resistance during a free fall and i'll describe this to you because i want you all to really go ahead and explore it later uh there is a tower it's like something they have shown as if it's like a tower of pisa an elephant and a feather both are being dropped and the questions come uh, on the left hand side along with the gif so the questions that they have framed are also such beautifully critically framed questions that what do you think will happen they are not saying they are not explaining anything what do you happen will reach first and obviously they both of them they come down at the same time 
then they will ask but oh it did not happen what you had imagined right but do you think that the feather and the elephant both would come down in reality well i missed telling you that this happens when it is there is no air and just imagine a gif is hardly a few seconds right you see that gif happening there and you you read it here i mean what the students will not understand or what i mean in 30 seconds the students get the concept of free fall go to the next gif the next gif is there is air resistance so again that elephant and the same feather they are dropped from that uh, tower and now there is air so that uh, the beauty of this gif is that the feather actually twists and turns and moves up and the left hand side uh, explanation also goes along with it actually deriving giving out formulae and everything and the student can of course it's a gif it's less than a minute few seconds you can actually see it very clearly and the whole part of you know taking an half an hour lecture or a 15 minute explanation is just uh, condensed and let us say concentrated into a task of understanding which is not more than 3 minutes and the students just get it like this because i've tried it with students and the students were like amazed and the teachers were amazed the students were wow this is so nice i will never forget it and this i tried it with class 9 class 11 both so just to see whether uh, age difference or knowing uh, certain things early on do they make difference so these this particular website has got such great resources uh, present here anything any thoughts that come to you before we go ahead this is this particular group is to silent i'm not used to taking uh, sessions for groups which are silent so silent that is okay so uh, another one that is uh, the royal society of chemistry that is uh standardly there for almost all of them i will just try to show you and then we will go to the last one okay i can see something in the chat okay no if it is brilliant then i don't want to have that silence baba i i mean it's it's good to have interaction otherwise when will we also meet right now for the chemistry people and the physics people also you have this entire part this is again a beautiful uh, website to have lots and lots of things i just take you to I think there is a lag here. I am not so sure whether you are able to see what I am showing. Are you able to see the education website? Are you able to see this? Yeah, can somebody answer whether you are able to see this? Because I think my internet is slow. Ma'am, your screen is visible. We can okay. see your screen. Okay. So, uh, this particular part uh, has got lots of resources which, uh, which are transdisciplinary. Like here, if you see this one. uh this is actually electrochemical cells which also merges physics but also merges maths and you can actually teach maths using chemistry so there are quite a few students i mean i have had quite a few students who did not like chemistry but they liked other subjects then what do we do with such students you have to study because it is there in the syllabus well we have these type of things where uh, you just try to find out the trigger so if a student particularly likes about maths then you can say that use these number grids and find out 
also if there are students who uh, i mean you want to draw the dot structure and all so you can actually create these similarly there are others uh, there are websites by the bbc yeah the british broadcast uh, broadcasting corporation which also has got something called as bbc bytes b y t e is a very small uh, bite sized uh, resources that are there which will help you to uh, make visualizations and conceptualization of very abstract principles so you can actually take this and ask the students to draw the dot and the cross structure and then as they have suggested at the top you can go ahead with explaining how this will lead to the covalent bonding and the other ways in which you want to even explain this uh, reaction mechanism also i have tried this using for reaction mechanism first i asked them like gave them the practice of uh, cross and dot at their own self pace then i asked them to keep their screens open there but this was of course as a science lab so you'll have to actually test it out how it works and it uh it works good with both synchronous and asynchronous so then if you were to have a reaction between these two atoms which of the molecule, which of the atom will actually take part in the bonding and that's how the discussion about uh the energy of activation and the electrons that have that much energy uh, or that the ones that they don't have from where do they absorb energy and then how the mechanism takes place and how the temperature and the pressure conditions come into the play so this is how you can actually uh, explain this to the students where they are actually drawing also and doing a lot of stuff so this is something uh, which is there on the royal society of chemistry website these are again so it's like age wise it is there you have worksheets that you can have uh, similarly for the national association of physics which uh, also is available i think on the fet website as well so uh, you have these particular practical videos which are there in the context of uh, like the uk in this particular case but uh, just remember that royal society of chemistry also has got a got an indian chapter and their india chapter functions out of bangalore so you and also every state almost every state or every zone in india has got a, a rsc chapter you can always connect to them and ask them whether you can have your own resources built so the teachers who need like who feel that you know much better and you can contribute resources there so you can also go ahead and uh, you know try to try to contribute also uh, i mean this is not something that we should be very proud of but yes as we are still struggling to whether it is going to be online or offline or god knows what uh, the uk or rather the royal society of chemistry as i would better put it they are also training teachers on how to deal with the post covid uh, school now what do we mean by post covid is because and this is happening since past 6 months or rather more than that because see the students have been away from in person meeting for a very long time now they do not know how to react in person they they really do not know okay they really do not know whether this what we consider is rude it just doesn't occur to them because they have not met each other for more than one and a half years or so so how do you prepare students to come back to the physical world come back to the physical classroom that is also a very good part very good resource present on the royal society of chemistry website and now as we move towards the uh, end of today's session uh, i really hope that you would explore all this i'm going to take you to my favorite website uh that is the stellarium now this is uh actually for the physics uh for the astronomy related part uh it is i guess the last chapter in most of the state books of grade 8 and grade 9 it's also in geography uh i use it to teach chemistry of stars and i also have a uh, two video blogs 
using stellarium app on youtube named stories of the stars okay now why is this one of my favorite apps is because this is the season when the skies are very clear and actually you can introduce your students to something as wonderful as night sky observation this is also available in the mobile app format but i prefer to use the web app uh that is my like i am like that i want to prefer web applications as compared to the mobile applications and don't want to overload the phone that's it's that simple as that now if you see here uh you can actually now okay so you can see here you can see this near pune so it's the live uh location of the stars with respect to your own location okay so this is actually today's map today's sky map now uh if you want to search for something uh okay one more thing uh you can have this landscape or you may choose to not have a landscape but i prefer to have a landscape because at least in the initial part when we are talking uh about the stars and uh telling the students about the planets and the star gazing it's always better to have some reference point so you can have this of course it moves the way you want to move it and uh, if you have any celestial event you can actually show it in this if you click on something uh, that details those details come up and then you can go ahead with explaining things and like you know in uh, at least in the maharashtra state board uh, this particular chapter is in grade 8 yes uh grade 7 it's just an introduction and grade 8 uh, as far as i know it is in grade 8 where we talk about the constellations and the light year the concept of light year and so on so on and so forth so uh i want to explain constellations so there are these constellations this particular constellations are there and this is the current way mm, in my sky near pune this is how it is but uh, let's suppose if i want to uh, intrigue my students more then i always ask them that do you see do you see the bear there or do you see uh, uh, you know the stories that we have and then you also have the constellation art so you actually tell them that this is how the people uh, the ancient cultures actually saw the stars and then they gave them they imagined figures human beings creatures and others uh, basically we have a fantastic uh, discussion on the great bear because if you see the great bear constellation it has got a tail whereas the bears actually don't have a tail so then just think of it as a fiction of i mean a fig of their imagination of the ancestors and you can have a lot of other things i think so this is how you can actually use uh, okay this is the great bear that we were talking of right the ursa major the ursa minor and uh, yeah i can just show you so this is the tail right so where the bears have tails the bears don't have actually tails so uh, that also like brings in the integration of art into science which is again what we say that the convert the stem into steam so that it gets like like the steam is what is required to propel uh, ahead and take it much more ahead so these are a few tools that you can use and this is one of my favorite um there are more than 150 tools that you can have but the thing is like i said uh the whole thing is to use what and when there is also one more tool that i would want to show but the thing is today there is some problem and i am not able to upload it i mean oh, the one that is there on my the one that i have downloaded probably you know like we had some Exam today because of which, ah, uh, 
Yeah, so this is Avogadro. This is again a free and open source software. It's a molecule builder. Now, uh, you can download this and actually ask the student, and you can also demonstrate creating molecules. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you where I had used this extensively. Actually, it is a, you have to download it and then it works on your system. Uh, today it is taking, I don't know, when I tried to launch it before the session, it just took too long to get launched. Maybe, uh, maybe some issue, either my laptop is like loaded with data or something. So I'll just tell you. Uh, I have used this extensively to create molecules and to build the molecules. And not only I have used, I mean, when I say I have used, uh, it's not that I build the molecules, I make my students build the molecules, okay? So uh, a very interesting anecdote again here, I'll tell you. It was like the first time I used Avogadro. Now this is a very higher version of Avogadro that has come. Uh, I used Avogadro like for the first time and it had come, I think eight years or nine years ago. And why I use that is also, I'll tell you. One of the student had, I was just exploring that this new molecule builder has come. Eight, eight nine years ago, this was something great. So, uh, and the same day, one of my students asked me, uh, grade nine, what will happen? Why can't we have, like you have a single bond, double bond, triple bond. Why can't we have four bonds? Now, uh, like any, any other teacher would have done. What I had done was I gave him the uh, stick and ball models that we have normally, right? Uh, which have the bonds are made up of those straws and all. So I gave it to him and I said, huh, try it and see how it will happen. Because the whole premise being that you can't do it. And it doesn't happen as it is. It doesn't happen because uh, the straws are too less and, you know, it does that. Now, this boy was like uh, very what I can say, very smart person. He took another straw, which was supposed to be like another bond. He joined them and he connected and he showed, okay, now this happened. Now, now how do I explain? And then I was stuck that, yeah, now if, if this is what concretization is going to uh, do, then I will have to really figure out something else. And that was the time that I was actually exploring this. And then I told him that, let's try on this. And then it actually shows the bond length, the bond angle, and how it is not possible. And then he told me, yes, I understood why it will not be possible. So that, uh, that was the day when I started using Avogadro very, very seriously for all conceptual understandings of bond formation for the students. So I don't use it. I give this to, I download it on my system and I tell my students to use this. Another very interesting thing about the critical thinking part that I would like to share with you all is, uh, okay, let's go back to this one. Okay, another one, another experience that I would like to share that what is this critical thinking all about? And when I say that science is not just uh, in the lab. So uh, I was doing this, uh, uh, the science club part uh, in a school. Uh, I think I was teaching science at that time for the school section also, just because I used to like it. So I gave the pH papers to students and I told them it was like Friday. So I told them that this weekend, go ahead and explore. Whatever you want to explore, sabka pH test karo. You know, so usually what happens is it's a very common thing. Students are going to test the pH of uh, soap and something else. And I told them, I don't want anything with respect to soap. Go ahead, go think, think some, something different. And come back on Monday and show you just bring it in a plastic paper, uh, plastic bags and those Ziploc bags and remember what you have tested it with. So then, you know, when you leave them open like that, they are going to test all sorts of things. And they did. And they came up with like, you know, vegetable soup, um, the pH of, uh, let us say, I still remember that. You can find out this particular resource on teachersofindia.org, but I guess it will be five year old at least. You can search my name and teachersofindia.org, which is uh, Azim Premji University Initiative. So uh, because it's an Azim Premji uh, University Initiative, uh, it will come up and then you can find out. Yeah, 335. Yeah, we still have, right. okay. So, uh, 
because I had told them this, they went ahead to check it out with a uh, soup and milk and tea and all the other things. And there was this one boy who came and who said that I want to actually show you something, but uh, you will laugh at me. I said, no, I won't laugh. Come on. Nobody laughs in a science class. So what have you tested? He said, I have tested the pH with my saliva. So I said, okay. So he said, and before eating, after eating. I said, okay, sure. So then, you know, we discussed. And it led to such a beautiful discussion that when does the pH of our mouth change? After how many hours or after how, many, how much of time does it actually change? And how does this pH affect the dental caries, the cavities that we get in the teeth? So what is the reaction with the uh, acid and the enamel? Yeah, somebody's talking. Uh, yeah, this is Monica. Uh, yeah. Dr. Ajita, we can continue till 3.35 if you think you need that no, much time. No, I think five more minutes is fine. Okay, great. Up to you. Okay. okay. So uh, this is how the critical thinking part uh, has to be induced. So this boy not only tested it with his own saliva before and after eating, he tested it with his pet dog's saliva also. And so he found out the difference between uh, the pH of a human saliva and the pH of a pet dog or a canine. And that's what we call as going beyond the textbook and actually living the science and not just keeping science to like just into the confines of the textbooks. That is what this whole session is about. Uh, things in this perspective that every single day you are going to have hundreds of tools coming up. And the more you explore, you will find much more interesting things that uh, you can actually use. But the thing is, you'll have to actually think how you want to use it so that ultimately at the end of the whole teaching transaction, your students should love you and the students should love science. Okay, because that is why we are here. So this is uh, what it is all about. You can go to my website, the part that is written there, it's on WordPress. You will also find a few games. There is a category called as unschool. So uh, on the website, in if you there is a drop down menu, you can go there. Um, there are a few games that students can play at home uh, using just household material. You don't need anything more, but there are two to three games of maths. I think they are more. And uh, you will also find all these type of activities that we just spoke of uh, somewhere or the other, you will find them there. So with this, uh, I hope that uh, you found this session useful and I'm just waiting for your comments and not comments, waiting for your interaction. I would like to um, know what did you all feel about uh, and anything more that you would want to know. Yes, yes, please go ahead. Don't, uh, you, we don't have to have that raise hand. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I would also want to know what is this TR and ML? There is a uh, SELA. I can see TR, SELA. Uh, this is TR's teacher, I guess. So your hand is raised. So please uh, unmute yourself and speak. Would somebody tell him or her that the hand is raised? Ah, the arm is Tripura. Okay. Hello, ma'am. Uh, the session is. I couldn't hear you when there was a lot of echo. Yeah, so it's different.
Yeah, I want to know your thoughts. Yes, uh -huh. yes, ma'am. Yes, go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you, ma'am. I am Sheila Gonchudri from Tripura. Okay. Your session has your session is very much enlightening me. It has happened. It it has helped me a lot, ma'am. Thanks a lot. No, I would like to know how it has helped you. Yes, sir. So many. Uh, yes, ma'am. So many uh, about so many apps. I never knew. And now I think uh, I can help my first. I will be enlightened, and I will be helping my students. So okay. thanks. Initially, in the COVID uh, situations, whenever I used to do the classes, uh, I used to do some uh, practicals at my home using uh, some uh, materials which is readily available. Uh, such as um, sodium bicarbonate, uh, like that um, for crystallization, um, that uh, palm candy, like that card, all these things I used to use uh, at my home and make uh, small videos. I used to send uh, them to uh, my students. Now, after getting all these informations from you, I think I will uh, be able to help them in a better way. Thanks, ma'am. Thank you. And yes, we are wrapping up. Just the last parting thought is this, that uh, most of the times what happens is the teachers actually conduct demo and send out videos. While that is a very good option, it is quite passive when we consider the discipline of science at such, which relies so much on the practical aspects. So therefore, please try to include online labs, um, simulations, augmented reality, virtual reality, as many apps as you can. And let the students do it in an asynchronous manner and come back and conduct a class on discussing the concepts and clarifying the misconceptions. So I think uh, the CIT people can, I mean, we can leave the room and go to the main uh, session room, I think. Oh. Yeah, I have lots of stories and you can uh, visit my website for all the stories, the documentation and probably there will be more. Yeah, so we can leave the room, I think. Uh, Priya, ma'am? Priya Singh, CIT? Should we leave the room and go to the main room? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ah, there is no any doubts, so we can leave the room. Excuse me, sir. Sir, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, the session. Hello, Madhu, sir. Sorry to interrupt you. 